and the author of this book, Journeys Out of the Body. Would you welcome Robert Monroe? It is indeed a problem. How does one follow <laughs> yeah. from, from body to out of body? Yeah. What is an out of body experience? Well, uh, an out of body experience is a state of being, a state of awareness, a state of action, uh, separate and apart from the physical body. Uh, about 25% of the population throughout the world, I guess, uh, has this spontaneously take place that they're aware of uh, at least once in their lifetime. Now, what, 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 happens? Yeah. what happens? What happens? Well, what happens is that uh, you as an individual uh, suddenly find yourself for one reason or another apart from your physical body and yet you can think, you can be, you can act, but your physical body is in some other location. It may be only two inches away or 2,000 miles away. Now, we've heard about people who have supposedly died and then have come back to life. That is also an out-of-body experience? That is indeed an out-of-body. It's a rather extreme way. Uh, uh, <laughs> you believe in that, then? Oh, yes. So, in other words, if someone's in an awful automobile accident, and the next thing they know, they're kind of floating above it, watching... That's what we mean by a spontaneous one, as it were. And uh, uh, it is very, very common, and also, a very important thing is that everyone does this. The fact that you do not remember it, it does not uh, infer that it does not happen. For example, uh, during what we call Delta sleep at night, which everyone goes through, is quite probably, according to our researches, the time when everyone goes into this out-of-body state. You don't remember it, but it does take place. Now, is that like a dream? No, it's something apart from a dream. It is a, uh, there's, we, there's no philosophic uh, connotation in our approach to it, but it is somewhat a process of the recharging mechanism that you get during sleep. Hmm. Hmm. When you first had yours, were you frightened? I was totally frightened. Uh, Panic-stricken is a better word for it. And uh, I went through, as a result, uh, all the processes of uh, medical examinations, psychiatric examinations, trying to determine why this was happening. Robert, describe for us your first body. Can you remember it? Oh, I can remember it. Uh, you still look frightened. <laughs> oh, hang on. Uh, very simple. Uh, I had been encountering uh, a phenomenon that was like a vibration in the body. And uh, I had gone to my doctor about it, and he had uh, said, oh, that's just nerves and so on. And I would have to wait till this uh, faded out. And it was, it's not a physical vibration, incidentally. And one night I was lying in bed uh, waiting for this vibration to cool down or fade away, as it were, so that I could um, simply roll over and go to sleep because I didn't feel I should go to sleep or couldn't as a result of this taking place. On that particular night I was waiting because it was a Friday night and Saturday was a, going to be a beautiful, bright, cold front day, meaning a good day for gliding. So I was lying in bed thinking what a nice time I was going to have that Saturday, uh, getting into these nice thermal lifts and soaring around. That was with a glider, incidentally. <laughs> and on that particular time, I was in the process of thinking this way, uh, I suddenly uh, felt something bumping against my shoulder. And I looked, and here was this, what looked to be the floor, bumping against my shoulder. And I thought, that's strange. I don't remember going to sleep. And I looked across, and I said, there's no rug on the floor. I looked more closely, and there was something sticking up out of the floor that shouldn't be there. And trying to perceive what this was, I got a real close look and it was the chandelier and in desperation I realized that I was not bumping against the floor I was bumping against the ceiling and I flopped around in the air and looked down and there below me was the bed and here was my wife in bed and here was a man in bed with my wife <laughs> oh and my first response is well this is an odd kind of Freudian type dream and I thought well I better get a good look at this man who was in bed with my wife and I 
moved over a little bit closer, and with a great shock, I discovered that the man in bed with my wife was me. <laughs> and uh, then I went through this great emotional surge that I'm dying, death is here, I don't want to die, let me get back in there. And so I swam down to the body, popped in, and how, I don't know. And then I sat up in bed and looked around, everything was quiet. My wife was in, lying there in bed, and I looked up, and there was a chandelier. And needless to say, I did not sleep the rest of that night. <laughs> the next day, um, I hurried myself down to my favorite doctor, and he knew I was worried, but he couldn't find anything wrong with me. And that began the search. I fearfully tried to avoid letting this take place again, and as things do happen, it takes place again, and you have to sort of fight the surge of panic about it. it you know, <clears throat> I have gone to sleep many times and not remembered going to sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had what I guess we know as dreams or even nightmares, and I guess they're probably different. So how do you know it wasn't that, or it isn't that when you go in and have an out-of-body? It took me almost a year of very cautious exploration to determine that it was not a dream. How do you explore it? Well, <laughs> first you go just a little bit, and you look around, then you duck back in. <laughs> Then you go a little further, as I did in the initial stages. Uh, so in other words, you have com complete control of oh, out of yes. body? Mm -hmm. when, you, when you go through this in a careful process, you do, yes. I would be afraid of getting lost. Now, I know that sounds silly, but what if you went out and went around the block or something, got lost, couldn't get back? I did that a times. Did you? Yes. Well, see, did, it's did, not did. so silly. You could get lost. Oh, you do. It's amazing. For example, uh, unless you have been... Uh, uh, in a helicopter, for example, over San Francisco at night, let's say you find yourself, if you're only 100 feet over, a whole bunch of rooftops and try and find yourself and see where you are. Do you have any questions from the audience about this? Um, yeah. Jill. When, when did this start? How old were you? I mean, was it like you were a kid? No, it did not uh, start when I, I was about, hmm, about 40 years old. Mm -hmm. Really? And it, is it still happening oh. today? I mean, do you yes, in a different form. But you control it completely today, is that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you, you mean, wait, wait, you, you know when you're going to come out, you say, okay, tonight I'm going to go for around the block? Or? Yeah, well, I've gotten tired of going around the block. <laughs> <laughs> Can you go far? Can far? You uh, the farthest is about, well, I've gone around the world once, just for the oh, fun of it. Yes. It's, it's, um, uh, this time space gets very boring after a while. So you don't only go around the world, but you actually go out of the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, did, how many times can you go from Virginia to San Francisco, which has been one of my common runs, <laughs> before it gets boring? You like that, Rob? No, I just have a lot of friends here. <laughs> do you uh, meet anybody else up there? Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, we do. Now, can this help people if they learn this out-of-body experience? Can it help them when they die, when, or they think they're going to die, or their time's up in this There's life? There's a major discovery that comes with the result of such activity or practice. Without any equivocation, without any uh, going past hope, belief, uh, uh, faith, you know that you do survive death. This changes your overview, your perspective. You have that knowledge, and it's not a religious thing. It's not a a philosophic thing, it's a very, very pragmatic thing that you do survive physical death. And you also, as it says in your book, can take terminal patients and relieve them of their pain by getting them to this work out of This is what we do. We, we let them establish a beachhead where they're going so that they're totally familiar with where they're going and then their fears evaporate completely and they make nice neat plans with some friends of theirs there uh, to have a welcoming party, as it were. So you're not, you're not afraid of dying at all, are you? Well, yes, I don't particularly want to. I have too much to do here, but uh, I'm not afraid of it. I, I would think I would get rather irritated that if I had to die now, I'd be irritated. Is it now. possible, since you've had these out-of-body experiences, you know how you're going to die? Have you seen yourself die yet? <laughs> yes and no. I, I should give you one illustration that is important to me. Uh, I've passed the 20-year mark in this exploration. And I think that I have done this for two reasons. One, to prove that you can do this and still stay physically alive. And the second is that you can do this and still stay reasonably sane. <laughs> <laughs> two yeah. important points, yeah. I might add. Yeah.